So how this works is we've got this particular image and to access this, you have to just open this edit menu. Remember this very popular menu that we usually use for everything. So you're gonna use the edit menu for this. Just look for blur, okay? We've, we're gonna find it here. And now you're gonna see this right now. You can see, right, pretty much everything is disabled. Uh, also, by the way, before I just get started, I just want to point out for this, you do need to have the, like this is a premium feature. You need to have the paid uh, version of Lightroom Mobile. Either that has come through Creative Cloud membership or you have purchased it separately via your phone, just like I showed before. But this will not work if you have just the free version. So I should have probably pointed that out. But even if that's the case, don't worry, just look at this because this is a pretty amazing feature. Uh, because just knowing about it, you never know, maybe tomorrow Adobe makes it free, so you should just know about it, okay? Or it may inspire you to even get the paid one in case you don't have. But just see what happens the moment I change this blur amount slider and increase the blur. So just see. All right, so you can see that it says connecting to the cloud. You need the internet for this to work. So this is kind of think of it like this. This is AI based. So it has all this sampling data on its server. It's kind of communicating with it. And every time someone uses this, it actually gets smarter because it's using all those images to get smarter. So right now think of it like this. It is saying basically to the server, you know what? I've got an image like this, let's see all our data and let's see what's the best result we can give. And can you see those lights behind now start to become blurred. I can increase the blur amount like this and we start to get that nice bokeh effect, right? You can see how this starts looking really, really nice. Now here we have some of the important options. What is happening with this tool is if you are into photography, you will really appreciate this tool a lot because this is actually mimicking the lens of your camera and even inside the lens in particular the aperture right so aperture is basically what controls the depth of field uh, so depth of field is all about like you know uh, what is in focus what is out of focus and anything that is out of focus or often called as the bokeh it just kind of gets this blurred look and we can actually control that exact area where this plane of focus and the blurred part will be. So this exactly works like your lens. So first of all, uh, you see these five options which say circle, bubble, five blade, ring, cat eye. These are all mimicking the different types of blades that you usually find in a lens, okay? So sometimes lenses have like, uh, you know, like a circle, circular bl blade and all these things. And that's usually the most popular, okay, in good lenses. So you can see if I have those kind of blades, we get this nice shape of the bokeh. So you can actually see this because we have lights there. So you can actually see the shape difference also. Just see if I change over to the bubble shape. So this is how it will look with this kind of aperture blades on a lens. Then we have five blade lens. That is kind of going to give this pentagon kind of a look, okay? Then we got this ring look cat eye look, but the first three are perhaps the most popular. We're gonna stick with circle, since this usually looks the most natural because high quality lenses have these kind of blades, okay? We can, if you want, we can even increase the blur amount here. Yeah. But the next part is really cool, okay? So here's just see, if I hit this focus icon, okay? So if I hit this focus icon on top, we can actually control where exactly this focuses. And there are a couple of ways to do it. So we get this little slider which says near or far. Now, how does this work? Okay, so let's just see. If I move this slider, just see what happens to the image. Can you see now is the opposite, right? We're actually kind of, we have reversed the thing, right? Where the focus has gone in front on the subject and uh, sorry, the out of focus area has gone on the subject and the in part in focus area is behind, right? So we are basically changing what we call as a plane of focus. So this is more like if you were to think of this in terms of camera, like when you're actually taking this picture, it's kind of mimicking where exactly are you placing your focus point when you take the shot? Because wherever you take place the focus point, that area is gonna be in focus, right? Now there's one very cool thing. If you really precisely wanna feature, uh, uh, you know, put your focus point somewhere, there are two ways to do it. One is, first of all, I can hit this on the top right. You're seeing something that is like a square and a circle, right? Like a rectangle and a circle inside it. If I hit this, we actually see the different planes of focus which are colored. So they have just been colored so that we can see, okay, the first plane of focus, which has the subject and also the ground, because how the plane of focus works is, it is from left to right, think of it like this. It's, uh, so one of the biggest myths in photography, when you're doing photography is that we think 
just that area where we place the focus point will become sharp. No, it's actually an entire plane of focus that becomes sharp. Think of it like an entire horizontal surface that kind of becomes sharp. So it's not just going to be this subject, but even the left and right parts of the subject are going to be inside that focus point. So, so anything that is of a similar color is in that same focal point. Now just see, the parts behind that are where it starts to become red, pink, and it's being represented here. So we can, I can actually say now, looking at the slider, that you know what? I want this uh, plane of focus to be somewhere on the ground in the middle. Well, then I know that that part is kind of purple in color, right? So what I can do is I can start to move towards that. And what you see is, can you see this white light? It looks really cool. This is actually telling you where exactly the focus is. So the colored parts tell you, it's just kind of a guide to see, okay, Yes, yellow means the subject and this and so forth. But the main thing is you can simply see this, that yes, I know that, okay, this is moving it behind or in front. So for example, when this is the case, when most of those yellow parts, which are our subject in the ground near that, right now it's trying to tell me that this will be the part that will be in focus. So if I try, try to hide this, well, that is in focus, but I can move it anytime that I want. Also, we, I can, if I just on that slider, if I hit the rightmost Part where it, you know, you kind of have this handle, right? I can actually increase the area and focus also. So this is kind of mimicking your f-stop number in aperture. That means if you increase the f-stop number, more amount of area is in focus. But if you don't know about photography, that's perfectly fine. Just think of it like this. This is more area and focus. And again, we can verify this by again enabling this. And you're going to see, if I now move everything, can you see it's the same thing, but it's just that more of the area is in focus. But whereas if I really reduce this, then the area and focus is going to be very narrow and the blur will be more, okay? So if this is the case, if I'm trying to use this, yes, we're going to get a better looking bokeh because the background will be more blurred, but then it's also tougher to find that exact focus point because we have to be really careful that yes, it is on the subject, something like this. Now we can be sure that yes, we are really using a very high blur amount, but we know that yes, the focus is very sharp on her, okay? then we can even kind of hit this, uh, the first icon there, and it's just going to reset things in such a way, or that area on focus in such a way that it is kind of giving us like what was the default area and focus, which probably Lightroom thinks is, you know, is enough. Like it'll give you a good balance between blur, and also it'll not risk your subject going out of focus. But if you want manual control over it, you can pull those handles and even make it shorter or bigger, depending on the kind of look that you are going for, okay? So I think this is looking good. Finally, if you really want to just exactly place the focus point, just like as if you were shooting from your camera, then also we have an option for that. So just see, if I take this on the, the next icon, which says next to that focus, there's a second icon, which is kind of like a target icon. I can take that and I can exactly place where I want. So even some people might just prefer this instead of moving that slider, you know, because sometimes that can just kind of not feel very intuitive. Well, this you can do that. You exactly place the focus point on her face because obviously in a portrait, the face has to be the sharpest. But you can still use this. That means you can still decrease or increase the blur by using this. So you can use any of these options. All will give you the correct results. And then once you're done, you can hit apply. So it's just again gonna kind of render this whole thing through its servers and all, and you can see it's saying working. So let's just finish its job and we'll quickly see a before and after. All right, so it's done its work. Let's hit the check mark. Let's just long press this. So we came from this to this, almost as good as using uh, what we call as a fast lens or a lens with a wider aperture. Basically a good quality lens helps you blur the background. So I think this is really cool. And it's still kind of in the development stage on some images, it doesn't work very well, okay? But we'll probably tackle that in a future video. Right now, I just wanted to introduce this to you. Let's also look at one more feature like this, the AI feature in the next video.